Thank you very much for joining us this afternoon for the last session of our volunteer festival for today on PowerPoint tips with Mike and Ruth. Um, so Mike and Ruth have prepared a um, short presentation for us and I'm sure we'll have an opportunity to take any questions as well as we go. Um, so I will pass over to you both now, Mike and Ruth. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sally. Um, and welcome from sunny Lincoln. <laughs> you, you know, it's always sunny here. <laughs> That's what we always say. <laughs> to, our, to our presentation on PowerPoint tips. And it does seem rather surreal doing a PowerPoint presentation on giving a PowerPoint presentation. Um, over the years, we've delivered a variety of uh, presentations using PowerPoint. Uh, talks for ch uh, charities, training sessions for church readers, um, online church services, and I've delivered a number of training sessions for voluntary organisations in a professional capacity. So what we want to do in today's session is just give you some uh, do's and don'ts that we have actually learnt uh, by experience over the, um, over the years. What we want to do is just give a short presentation and then we'll open it up for questions and any tips um, and ideas that you'd actually like to share with other people on the presentation. Can I just ask you to mute yourselves so that we don't get any feedback whilst, the, uh, whilst we're doing the, the presentation section? So I think the, the main purpose of slides is actually to enhance your presentation. And it's always worth bearing that in mind when you're, you're putting a presentation together and ask yourself for each slide, is this a visual aid? Um, now we've got a, a lovely picture there of Halloween balloons, um, but actually they're nothing at all to do with our talk. <laughs> um, and in fact, are a very good in, um, example of a, of a distraction. And interestingly enough, um, it's said that the brain processes images more quickly and easily than text. So the chances are that you looked at the picture first before you actually read the text. And also leave uh, fancy slide transitions, animations and sound effects to the Hollywood filmmakers. So, um, first things first, really, what length of presentation do you want to do? How many slides do you want to have? Um, sometimes we see people with 30, 40, 50, 60 slides on a presentation. Please don't do it. Less is more when it comes to slides. We would suggest no more than one slide for every two minutes that you're going to chat. So 20 minutes to 30 minutes, you're looking at 10 to 15 slides maximum. You know, otherwise they're just like they're, they're zipping through like an animated film. Um, so you don't need that many slides. When you're putting them together, run through the presentation a few times so you have an accurate idea of the length. If you find you're having to skip through a few slides, just take them out because they shouldn't be there in the first place. We've all sat in presentations where people have literally flicked through a whole load of slides so you couldn't see them, couldn't read them. And you just think, what, what were they there for? You know, they should have been taken out for this particular talk. Maybe they'd done a very long presentation somewhere where they had lots of slides so that's fine but target your slides to the length of presentation that you're looking forward to do. So in terms of text um, slides are good for graphics and there are some excellent um, shared interest diagrams that you can use in any shared interest presentations and they're also good for overviews and bullet points but they're actually a really poor medium for detailed text um, and I think this slide would definitely fall into the well you won't be able to read this slide excuse which begs the question why are you actually including it in the in the first place so avoid paragraphs of text long quotations and even complete sentences 
you know, five or six lines of text really should be the maximum. Um, and don't forget to spell check any of the text that you do use. I think it's worth pointing out that we have been at a number of presentations where people have put slides up just like this that you just couldn't read. Um, maybe uh, this is a good time to just bring in a little thing to do with Zoom. Hmm. Over the last two, three years, we've been using Zoom. It's very easy to share slides, presentations, pictures and things with Zoom. And your audience is right up to the screen, as close as I am here, it's two or three feet. So you can get away with um, small fonts, lots of text, a bit more than, than you would normally. Remember, if you're giving a presentation somewhere, they're either going to put it up on a big telly or they're going to project it, but whatever, you're going to be a much further away from the screen. Um, so it, it is important not to put too much stuff on it. I think we, I think people have got a little bit lackadaisical because they can get away with it with Zoom, but you won't get away with it in a in a in a church hall uh, where you're being projected onto a little screen at the back, um, and you really want things to stand out. So fonts are very important. And our fourth point is fonts. Here is a great example of a Victorian poster for an event. Mm -hmm. Now, in the Victorian days, to get people's attention, they'd use every font they had in their box, literally every line. Let's have another font, guys. Um, and, you know, these posters used to be very long as well. Lots of different details, lots of different fonts. It's really in your face. You don't need that on a PowerPoint presentation. You're best off just sticking to one font. Um, occasionally you might find reasons for just using a, an extra font for some reason, but normally um, don't do it. Don't be attracted to, to weird and fancy fonts. Many of them are difficult to read at a distance. Um, Avoid italics at all costs. That is also difficult to read. Um, you have bold, which is uh, the best thing for headings, and you have size. You can adjust the fonts with size, and that makes a difference. Um, so here's our Victorian uh, poster, and it's uh, for, if anybody's out there who recognises it, they'll know it's a pretty special poster. Um, it was actually purchased by John Lennon in the 1960s uh, in an antique shop. And he found this nice poster. And the next thing they did was they made it into a song. Um, and this is a simple, simple font using bold, not too many lines, nice and clear, easy to read on the scene or on, on the screen there. Um, and if anybody tells you it's a Lennon, John Lennon song, tell them it isn't, because Paul McCartney also wrote some bits of it as well. Okay, fonts. On fonts, we'll go to no reading. Um, it's very tempting, but you don't need to read out what the text is on the slide. Your audience can do that for themselves. And I think your presentation note should expand on the, the slide text and the bullet points that you've made. And that's that's your opportunity to actually give more information than there's on the slide itself. If you're using or you're going to be giving out handouts, do that at the end of the session rather than at the beginning. And I think Mike mentioned earlier about um, using Zoom and how we've got a bit slapdash in terms of presentations um, via computers. And similarly, I think we we now we almost need to relearn how to do presentations face to face again. And I think key points are the idea that we are we don't speak to the slides. We're actually speaking to our audience and we're making eye contact with them. 
And the key purpose of any presentation is actually to get people to listen to what you are saying. We said earlier that slides are a visual aid, but actually it's you that the audience should be focusing on. Ah, images, always a good one. Here is a toy poodle um, on the screen, looking very nice. But Ruth tells me that if you're gonna have a dog, you have to have a big dog. So this is more Ruth's size of dog, <laughs> and it is also a much better size of picture. If you're gonna put a picture on your slide, just make it as big as you can, because it has impact. Um, remember, you can put text on top of the picture. If it's a dark picture, you can use white text. If it's a light picture, you can use black text. Rather than having to make space in the white for your text, which reduces the size of your picture. Um, also, of course, remember with pictures that you need to put any credit for the image on your presentation. If you picked up a picture from somewhere on the internet, there will be a credit for it, usually. Or if you've even got somebody who's given you a photograph, you need to know who's taken the photograph um, and what the uh, credit information they want putting on that is. You'd be very uh, wary of um, credits. I search for this photo but i couldn't find any information so sometimes you just have to say couldn't couldn't find it um unknown so images there was something else we were going to say about images oh and try and stick to one one on a slide um if you put more than one image on a slide people start looking through the images to try and work out which one which one you're talking about or which one you, you're coming to. And, you know, often you see, you'll see four little pictures on a slide. One, you can't see them too well. And two, you're not sure how they relate to what the speaker's saying. Um, I, I remember watching a, a presentation by a, a professional in America. I think he was doing um, something to, to do with Apple. Um, and he just had, a sh I mean, a huge projector on the back of the stage, and all it had on each each slide was just one picture, and that that's all he used for the whole whole of the talk. And a picture wasn't always related to what he was saying; it was sort of slightly off, a bit of lateral thinking as to why the picture was there. But it was really effective that the size of the picture really helps. People will will see that, and and it'll uh, make a difference. Point number seven. Navigation. Um, there are many ways of actually moving your slides forwards, but do make sure that you also know how to go backwards um, on your slides, particularly if somebody perhaps has a query and you need to go back to a slide um, that you've previously shown. Um, and I think that also links to the point of make sure you've got your slides in the right order. <laughs> we went to a, a presentation not so long ago at Lincoln University, and, and it was a senior lecturer who was giving a presentation. He was part way through, he was clicking on a slide and he said, oh dear, that's not the right slide because he'd actually got that slide and the following one in, in the wrong order. So do make sure that they're actually in the order that you, uh, that you want them to be. You could also end up going forwards accidentally, which is easily done. I've done it myself. Um, you know, you click the mouse twice instead of once, and suddenly you're, you're one slide ahead. So we always need to be, you know, how do I get back to a previous slide? Usually, you know, you can press a little the left arrow maybe, or you can do a right hand mouse click and choose go backwards. There's various ways, but do check out that you're you you can do that. Um, there are also ways to go to a specific slide. If somebody, you know, later on in the presentation says, oh, could we, could we see that slide about the food production again? Um, you'll find that there, I'm, I'm just looking and I, I know that Control and S uh, will give me a list of the slides so I can just pick the one I want to go 
and show. So worth practicing that bit of, you know, because you never quite know what's going to happen. Simplicity. Keep your slides clean, simple and uncluttered, although obviously you would have something on this slide. Um, but I think these days you rarely see professionals using fancy backgrounds because that in itself is a distraction from the information that you've got on the slide. This is the shared interest template that you can do, uh, you can use for any uh, presentations that you're making. Uh, do make sure that it's consistent. And also if you're using um, text and particularly images, make sure that they don't overlap with the header or the footer um, as that tends to look quite untidy. Okay, we've uh, we've spoken about some some easy points for your presentations. You've you've put together something. It's 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 cracking good. Um, it's just ten to fifteen slides. You've got uh, notes to take with you so that you know what you're going to say as well. You're all prepared. But how do we get that presentation in front of an audience? Now these days, often people will take their own laptop. They've got the presentation on it, they just take the laptop, plonk it down. Maybe they're going to take a TV screen. We've done this at um, places where we need we were just doing a stand and, and we took a flat TV screen and the laptop, plugged them all together. Remember to take the cables because otherwise it's embarrassing. And an, sorry, and an extension lead. Extension lead, all, always handy because the power points are never where you want them. Um, that's relatively easy to do, but it's not always possible. You might not be able to get, take a laptop with your presentation on for various reasons, or you might not be able to use it at, on the system that you're being provided with um, as well. It might be a projector system, uh, such like. If you're taking your laptop, but it's gonna be put onto a projector, do make sure that you've got some adequate cables and that there's somebody there who knows what they're doing because it's not always straightforward and some projectors now are really quite out of date and they will not work with a modern laptop with a modern HDMI cables um, but anyway you've got the presentation there that's great on other occasions though when you can't use your, your laptop you might put your presentation on a memory stick uh, no, memory stick. Anyway, you know what they look like, funny little things, put all your stuff on, can hold amazing amounts of information. Now, that's very well. The people you're going to give a talk to say, yeah, we'll, we've got a laptop uh, plugged into our system or, or we've got a desktop, it's all great. Just bring your memory stick along and we'll be all fine. Please make sure that um, they have a copy of the software. If you've done your PowerPoint presentation in Microsoft PowerPoint, you need to make sure that wherever you're going, they're going to have Microsoft PowerPoint. It's not, it's not a no-brainer. You need to check just in case. As well as putting on a memory stick, you might also think about putting it in the cloud. Sally has a copy of our presentation here that we just sent through the cloud. Um, uh, just in case our copy went wrong or our internet just decided to pack up, um, we'd still be able to keep going on the telephone with the shared um, presentation from elsewhere. It's a useful fallback. Also, you might decide to email a copy so that it's sitting on somebody's machine just in case um, something goes wrong and they can they can download it. Um, and as a final level of backup, and uh, not many people know about this one, but I think it's really great. You can save your presentation as a PDF. Now, a PDF file is the things you open with Adobe Reader, your bank statements, anything coming from anybody, any sort of document, uh, magazines, all sorts of things on the Internet i in the PDF format. It's a straightforward format. It's just X number of pages. OK, they don't do anything fancy, so you couldn't run a video off this. But if you were really stuck, 
you could actually use this on somebody's computer. And as long as they could open a PDF, i.e. they wouldn't need any other presentation software, uh, you'd at least be able to display it. And worse, uh, and even better, with a PDF, you could always print it off as well and hand it out to people. So that's a, that's a real um, a fallback situation. There is another uh, thing that you can do with presentations, which is interesting. You can um, save them as a set of images, um, JPEGs, a bit like photos. So each each slide would be like a photo. And that also can work in uh, in situations. Um, particularly thinking about fonts here. Now, if you use a font on your computer, it's great. It looks absolutely right and you get it perfectly positioned. And then you take it along to somebody else's machine. They pull up your presentation. It's all great, except the fonts have gone do lally. They're, they're, they're too big. They've gone onto multiple lines and it is a complete disaster area. And it's because the font you used on your machine is not on the other person's machine because not all machines have the same fonts. It's very complicated why they have different fonts, but there we are, believe me. When you save a PowerPoint presentation, there is a facility to save or embed the fonts. This is absolutely critical that you do that because that means that the font will go with your file and not have to be dragged from, from another machine. So embedding font. I'm not going to tell you how you do that. Just look it up in the help because it, it works in different ways on different systems. Um, but embed the fonts, make sure they're in, um, in your uh, presentation. There's two ways of, of, of selecting embed fonts. One, it will just embed the fonts, the letters that are actually in your presentation at that point. And that's the smallest way of doing it. And that's usually the best. But if you think you're going to edit the presentation somewhere or make even the slight change, you can actually get the embedded fonts to take the whole alphabet, even though there are letters you haven't used yet. So you usually find that option in the save section. So. Portability, how you move um, your presentation about. And finally, we were talking about this the other day because we were trying to think of examples of the word Hoover. Now Hoover, we all use the word Hoover. It's, it's a vacuum cleaner, but a lot of people will say it's a Hoover, even if it's a Bosch or a Dyson, or whatever. Hoover has become a word that is totally linked to vacuum cleaner. Um, it happens. Hoover are no longer the biggest manufacturer of Hoovers. They never were, I don't think. Um, but somehow, Hoover has become the word. And there are other, other ones that we can think of. Um, and the, the one, of course, that is obvious, and there's a little bit of an elephant in the room, is PowerPoint. Because we talk about PowerPoint presentations now. We don't, we don't actually talk about presentations because that, they're just presentations and we use PowerPoint. It's a tool uh, for creating our presentation. But people will say, have you got a PowerPoint? Are you doing a PowerPoint or whatever? Even though, um, you know, it's not a presentation. There are alternatives, of course. You don't have to use Microsoft PowerPoint because Microsoft PowerPoint costs money. And you may find that you're on a system that doesn't, doesn't have it. So you could use Google Slides. Anybody who has a Google account has access to Google Slides. It's quite good. It does basically the same thing as PowerPoint. It doesn't have all, this, all the fancy features. Um, but then again, you want to probably avoid most of the fancy features of PowerPoint because they just, as we started at the very beginning, often a distraction. You know, we you want your bullet points flying in from all sides and upside down and inside out. That's fine if you're having a bit of family fun. But uh, believe me, once you've seen one slide doing it, you really don't want to see it again. So Google Slides, worth a look if you, if you and of course that is free if you've got a, a Google account. Now, if you're running an Apple computer, 
um, then you might use Keynote, which is their um, presentation software. Um, and, and that's very good too. That will do everything you need. LibreOffice is a downloadable piece of software. It has a, uh, one of its uh, software features is Impress, which is the equivalent of PowerPoint. It's a presentation software tool. You can download it onto a Windows machine or an Apple machine. Um, it runs very well. And just, just to, uh, to show you, um, well, I don't need to show you, we've already seen because I haven't been running PowerPoint for this presentation. This presentation is actually running on Leave the office on my my laptop, so you've been slightly misled there. But there we are. You can see the presentation was actually designed in PowerPoint itself. I designed it all, and then I just moved it across and opened it up in Leave the office, and off off it went quite happily. Finally, for those who are really keen and interested in the software side of things, and and of course all young people. Who, who, who think all this other stuff is really old hat, um, would be using online um, presentation software. The, I think the most well-known one at the moment is Canva. You can go onto the Canva website and you can create a presentation with all sorts of features. Uh, we've been having some family quiz nights over the last two years and one or two of the younger uh, members of the family have come along with their Canva um, presentations with their list of questions, which are still difficult to do, but they look nice. Um, the other one was Visme, Prezi. I don't know where they get the names from, mind you. I really don't. Who's, who's thinking these names up? Um, they are also online um, ones. There are other ones which allow you to take a different approach um, to a presentation. You can have ones that sort of go off like big bubbles and all, all sorts of weird and wonderful stuff, but, but try not to make it too, too complicated. So um, that's our 10 alternatives. Mm -hmm. One last slide. <laughs> Notice large picture with, large picture, with yeah. white font over dark yeah. background. Yeah. Um, so thank you very much for listening. And we'd now like to open it up uh, for any questions and for you to share your own tips um, and ideas on um, PowerPoint presentations. Oh, can I just say an extra thing? Yeah, of course you can. Yep. Um, if you look at the picture there, it's it's a really good, nice picture. It comes from one of the shared interest uh, presentations. Um, but note, it is not dulled out. It is not slightly off colour. You will find that sometimes people put a picture in the background and they, they, it becomes like a draft. Um, you don't need to do that. Keep the, keep the picture there. If you need to put text on it, you know, make the text big, make it white, easy to see, but the picture is still looking really good. And, but I knew there was something I hadn't put in. Finally, this is really point 12, but you know, I'm sure you'll let me off. Um, make sure that you're putting good resolution pictures into um, a presentation. If you take something on off the internet, it is often of a very low resolution. It looks fine when it's two inches by one inch on a piece of paper or on a website, but you stick it on one of these slides and then put it on a projector that's 14 feet wide, it's going to look rubbish and it's going to look fuzzy and it's going to look not very good. So make sure if you're using pictures and things, do them, get a good quality resolution picture. This is a nice picture. You can see the coffee beans and, and things. It's, a, it's a good resolution. But, you know, I have seen ones where pictures have come on and you just think, oh, that's a bit blurred. That's a bit that's a bit little squares and things because they've, they've been small pictures and people have blown them up into a big size without thinking, oh, sometimes you, you get a really poor quality picture. Right, and with that last uh, point number 12, point number 12. Um, hand over for anybody, as I say, who'd like to make any comments um, or ask any questions. 
Thank you very much, Mike and Ruth. That was fantastic. I've certainly learned a lot and I have made some notes to review my upcoming presentation uh, that indeed. I prepared. So uh, <laughs> I'll be sure to, uh, to adapt them now.